Shalom. I'm Captain Zakar, and to my right, Officer Lahar. And you got 15 minutes with a captain. Today we're going to go over money-hungry pastors. In fact, we're going to destroy money-hungry pastors in right. 15 minutes. So let's get into it. Let's go to uh, Matthew chapter 7, verse 15. The book of Matthew chapter 7, verse 15. Uh -huh. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly... They are ravening wolves. Now, Christ put this in there for a reason. He's warning us for today's time, and even back then it was false prophets, but never like it is now today. You've got uh, mega pastors, you've got uh, TV evangelists, you've got everybody and their mama trying to get rich off of the people of God because they know we're in a poor state and always hoping for uh, um, a little bit of breathing room so they keep on preaching false uh, prophecies to us. So Christ is one of us. Beware of false prophets which inwardly are ravening wolves. Ravening wolves. And we as black people and Hispanic native Indian people, we act like it ain't no false prophets out there. It is false prophets. This is right. how you tell. Give me, a, give me Micah 3 and 11. Let's show you how you can tell a false prophet who's a money-hungry pastor. Read that. Micah chapter 3 verse 11. Uh -huh. The heads the real. Judge for reward. The heads meaning the leaders. Who's who? Who does the black community look for as leaders? It's your pastors. Right. They always look into the pastors as the community leaders. So read that again. Micah chapter three verse eleven. Uh huh. The heads the real. Judge for reward. They judge for reward. Read on. And the priests the real. Teach for hire. They teach for hire. If I'm lying, I'm flying. And I'm sitting in a chair right now. T.D. Jakes won't show up to your church unless the price is right. right. Criflo Dollar won't show up as a guest appearance unless the price is right. right. They don't move. They don't get on they, um, uh, what you call that, uh, they $65 million jet that they ask the congregation for unless the price is right because they got to put gas in that thing. So they, when they get there, you know what they're going to do? They're going to teach for hire. Read on. And the prophets, Darrell, divine for money. They do what? The bond for money. They teach. They teach for money. You know what that means? It's your season. Right. It's always your season. All you got to do is sow a seed of faith. Sow a seed of $50, though. Sow a seed of $100, though. Right. And if you got it, you can sow a seed of $200 or more with a gift love offering. They divine it for money because they know that's what our people want to hear. We are oppressed people as a nation, so they always divine it for money, promising you is your season when well, you ain't done nothing God says to do. Right. Give me that in Ezekiel 22. Let's show you. Ezekiel 22 and 26. Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 26. Uh -huh. Her priests have violated my law. This is how you can tell a, a false prophet, a money-hungry pastor. It says what? My, her priests. Have violated my law. The first sign is they're going to violate God's law. Off top, they're going to tell you God loves you no matter what. He hates the sin, not the sinner. Right. That's the furthest thing from the truth. What did they? What does it say again? They do what? Her priests have violated my law. They violate God's law. Read on. And have profaned my holy things. Uh -huh. They have put no difference between the holy. And profane. They put no difference between the holy and profane. Uh, we all one in Christ Jesus. Um, no difference between a commandment keeper and um, uh, the sodomite in the, in the choir. Right. They don't put no difference between the holy and profane. Read on. And have hid their eyes from my Sabbath. Uh -huh. And I am profane among them. You know how they have their eyes from, uh, from God's Sabbath? Is no longer the seventh day, it's the first day. It's no longer Saturday, it's Sunday. They profane God's Sabbath. Read on. Her princes in the midst thereof are like wolves, ravening the prey, uh -huh. to shed blood and to destroy souls, uh -huh. to get this honest gain. They doing what? To get this honest gain. That's why they divine it for money. That's why they teach it for hire. They are getting dishonest gain. You know what that means? They are teaching you lies for the money in your pocket. That's what God is telling you. Right. To get dishonest gain. And in the process of them getting dishonest gain, they are destroying souls. Destroying our community. 
We are worse than we were back in the 50s and 60s when we had an ideal family. Now, in, in the, in the uh, 21st century, they are here teaching God loves you no matter what, and all the commandments of God are done away with. You can eat whatever, worship him however. We all are uh, worshiping the same God, calling up different names. They are, uh, what does it say here? Destroying souls. Let's go to uh, verse 28. Read verse 28. Verse 28. Uh-huh. And her prophets have dabbed them with untempered mortar. Dabbed them with untempered mortar. They just keep stacking on top of the lies. You know what that means? Every single Christian pastor you go to going to be preaching the same thing, no right. matter what denomination they're in. Going to teach the same old thing. It's the same slave Christian rhetoric. Go ahead. Seeing vanity uh -huh. and the binding lies unto them. Read. Saying, thus said the Lord God, when the Lord have not spoken. God ain't speaking to them. God ain't dealing with them at all. They are, make, you know, where they getting their information from? They getting their information from the World Council of Churches. Look right. it up. Look it up. It's a council of, uh, of Edomites sitting at a table, coming up with doctrines to push to the churches, and that and the money hungry pastors take it and they go and, and where do you think sow a season came from? Where where, where do you think it go? Sow a seed. It's your season. What you a highly favored blessing? Where do you think that stuff come from? It come from a, a, what they call it, a think tank, like the World Council of Churches, right? And they keep on, uh, what it says, they daub it with untempered water, more lies and more lies and more lies, and God ain't speaking to none of them. Let's go to uh, Joshua chapter 1 and 8. Let's read that. Let's show you when uh, you have good success when it comes to God. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. Uh -huh. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Read. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night. This law meditate in it day and night. Read. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. You have to do what's written in the law of God. Read. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. That's when you'll make your way prosperous. And it's talking about more than just money. It's talking about the end all be all go of making it to the kingdom of heaven. Right. Eternal life. That's when you'll make your way prosperous. When? Read on. And then thou shalt have good success. You'll have good success in your marriage in, with your brothers, right. uh, with your sisters, right. with your work, with your family. Then you'll have good success when you meditate on the law. Give me a uh, third John. 3 John verse 2. Let's, let's precept that and, and show you that it didn't change even in the New Testament. God told you to meditate on the law, then you prosper, then you have success. Read that. 3 John verse 2. Uh -huh. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. Prosper and be in health. God says, I wish above all that you prosper and be in health as long as what? Even as thy soul prospers. As long as your soul is prospering. And the only way that your soul prospers is when you meditate on the law of God. Right. That's why you get you to all these people, uh, they talk about it's your season and, and uh, uh, blessings coming down from heaven. And everybody up in there just got their souls are destroyed. God already said it because the false prophets, the money hungry pastors are destroying it. Because they have turned their eyes away from the law of God and violated it. Your soul, your soul's already destroyed, but your soul prospers when you keep the law of God. Let's get right. there. Give me Psalms 19 and 7. Let's prove that. Psalms chapter 19 and 7. Once again, we destroying money-hungry pastors in 15 minutes. Psalms 19, verse 7. Read that. Psalms chapter 19, verse 7. Uh -huh. The law. Of the Lord is perfect. It's perfect. Read. Converting the soul. That is what's going to change each and every one of us blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians. It's the law of God. It ain't empty promises that some pastor uh, that came up with that made it sound real good to you. Read. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Uh-huh. Making wise the simple. Making wise the simple. Read on. The statutes of the Lord are right. Rejoicing the heart. Uh-huh. The commandment of the Lord is pure, uh -huh. enlightening the eyes. If the commandment of God is pure, that's how you make your soul prosper. Give me uh, Isaiah 56, verse 10. Isaiah chapter 56 and verse 10. Read that when you get it. Isaiah chapter 56, verse 10. Uh -huh. His watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. 
They are all dumb dogs. His watchmen, that's what a, a, a prophet or a pastor is supposed to do. They're supposed to watch out for the people when they see something uh, going wrong. But what what do they what do they say there? They are blind, still teaching white man Christianity, 400 years old, and still perpetuating the same lie to keep a uh, black man effeminate. Real soft. That's right. where you find the softest black man is in Christian church. Tap, uh, uh, clapping tambourines together and praise dancing with some two high ass pants on and a bow tie. Looking like they mama when they out there stomping and dancing in the ground. Read that again. His watchmen mm -hmm. are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. Uh -huh. They cannot bark. Sleeping. Lying down. Loving to slumber. Read on. Yay. They are greedy dogs. Money hungry. Go ahead. Which can never have enough. They can never have enough. That's why they won't do nothing to mess up their money. Right. Black men getting shot down in the streets unjustly. Uh, black women out here getting body slammed. You hear any pastor say anything about it? Nope, because they don't want their money to be touched. Mm -hmm. Read on. Yay, they are, they are greedy dogs, which can never have enough. Uh -huh. And they are shepherds that cannot understand. Read on. They all look to their own way. You know what that means? They will turn a blind eye. They will, they will not say what is right or what is wrong. Whatever you feel or how you feel, let God be the judge of right. it. Let God just wait out. Uh, uh, what's that thing they be saying? Uh, uh, God knows your heart. <laughs> they all look to their own way. They don't want to offend you so you'll stop the money flow. Uh, give me Lamentations 2.14. Lamentations chapter 2, verse 14. Let me show you what... Uh, uh, a pastor is supposed to do. Read that when you get it. Lamentations chapter 2, verse 14. Uh -huh. Thy prophets have seen vain and foolish things for thee. They seen foolish things. Go ahead. And they have not discovered thine iniquity. They supposed to tell you when you're in the midst of sin. They supposed to tell you when you're doing wrong. Right. And therefore, because they have it, read on. To turn away. Thy captivity. That's why we are in the land of our captivity for going on 600 something years now. Because captivity started for us in 1492 when the uh, so called Hispanics, our brothers, got conquered by the conquistadors. We've been here for over 600 something years. And, and, and they ain't turn us away from our, our captivity because they will not point out your sin. Right. Uh, let's go to Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 1. Let's show that again. Isaiah, chapter 58, verse 1. Read. Cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. Uh -huh. And show my people their transgression. And the house of Jacob their sin. So God's telling us that a prophet of God or a pastor of his people, we ain't sugarcoating nothing. Right. We're going to tell you how it is because we tired of captivity. Right. You know who ain't tired of captivity? Who's living real good off the people's money. Bring it up. They living real good. They don't want this thing to end. Why would they want it to end and, and Christ be uh, ruling over everything? It's going to stop their money flow. They don't want that. They only want Christ to come back to stop their money flow. Damn, they wicked as hell. Give me uh, Ezekiel 13, 17. Because when Christ comes back, he's the king. He's going to stop all that foolishness, all them lies. You ain't going to be able to push that. This is your season on the people no more. Uh, uh, You're going to find one of 144,000 come over and, and chop your head off. That's right. Uh, stab you through like it says in, in, in the uh, prophets. I think it might be Zechariah. Uh, read that. Ezekiel 13, 17. Ezekiel chapter 13, verse 17. Uh -huh. Likewise, thou son of man, set thy face against the daughters of thy people. Oh, you women, you ain't getting a uh, pass either. You women pastors, you ain't getting away either. God right. is against you too. Read on. What's prophesied out of their own heart? He ain't talking to you either. Go ahead. And prophesy. Thou against them. We prophesying against you women pastors. Put on a dress. Close your mouth. Sit down somewhere right. and learn something. Read on. And say, thus saith the Lord God, woe to the women that sow pillows to all armholes. Like Juanita Bynum. Go ahead. And make kerchiefs upon the head of every stature to hunt souls. Uh -huh. Will ye hunt the souls of my people? Read. And will ye save the souls alive? That come unto you. God is that how you gonna save him alive when you ain't even supposed to be up there uh, talking? You ain't supposed to be up there teaching. How you gonna save him alive? How you gonna teach a man how to be a man? It ain't right. your role as a woman. 
Uh, uh, give me, um, I don't want to stay here. Yeah, yeah, let's read, let's read on. Go ahead. Verse 19. Yeah. And will you pollute? No, no, don't want to go there? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. And will you pollute me? No, 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 matter of fact, let's go to uh, Numbers chapter 27 to show them that God don't want them up there teaching nobody. Numbers 27 and verse 15. Numbers chapter 27, verse 15. Uh-huh. And Moses spake unto the Lord, saying, Let the Lord, the God of the God of the spirits of all flesh, uh -huh. set a man over the congregation. Moses is asking God, set a man over the congregation. Read on. Which may go out before them, and which may go in before them, and which may lead them out, and which may bring them in, that the congregation of the Lord be not as sheep which have no shepherd. And let's see what God's response is to Moses' request. Read on. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take thee Joshua, the son the of what? The son. The what? The son. The daughter. The son uh -huh. of none. Uh -huh. A man in whom is the spirit, and lay thy hand upon him. God is in perfect agreement with a man being over a congregation. So you women sit down and shut up somewhere and learn something. Right. Learn your place. Go back to Ezekiel chapter 13. And I'm talking about you ones that, that want to be in position of power and rule over a congregation. Not the godly women that, that know their, their Titus 2 role. Right. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about you women pastors. Need to sit down and be quiet somewhere. Now let's go to uh, verse uh, 18. Is that what I want? No, no. Let's go to verse 22. Ezekiel 13, 22. Ezekiel chapter 13, verse 22. Uh -huh. Because with lies ye have made the heart of the righteous sad, uh -huh. whom I have not made sad, and strengthened the hands of the wicked. That he should not return from his wicked way by promising him life. That's why you've got um, uh, um, the sodomites in, in women churches. Because you don't tell him he's wrong. You right. tell him God loves him no matter what. You tell him it's a place for him here in this church. Right? So God says that you promising life to the wicked. That's a lie. God says there is no peace for the wicked. Right. He's against them. He wants them to repent, but you keep promising them life, telling them nothing's wrong. Let's go to uh, 2 Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2, let's read verse 1 through 3. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. Uh -huh. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, mm -hmm. who privily shall bring in damnable heresy. Changing the doctrine of Christ. Go ahead. Even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Read on. And many shall follow their pernicious ways. That's why Christianity is the largest religion on the face of the earth. Read on. By reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. So, so now us quote unquote Black Hebrew Israelites, we evil and we a hate cult when we and, and all we doing is teaching the truth of the Bible. It's right. prophesied that happened because you got false prophets among you teaching you lies. Uh read verse three. Verse three. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words with lying words make merchandise of you. They're gonna do what? Make merchandise of you. They're gonna empty your pockets. Go ahead. Whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not. And their damnation slumbereth not. Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 3. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 3. Uh -huh. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to hopes and words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. And what was Jesus Christ teaching? Keep the commandments and live. Right. Read on. And to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing. But doting about questions and stripes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmises, Read on. perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, uh -huh. and destitute of the truth. Now, now, here's the point. Read that. Supposing that gain is godliness. Supposing that gain is godliness. And wait till you see the video at the, uh, that we're going to drop on you at the end of this video. Suppose that, that gain is godliness. What does God tell you to do? From such, withdraw thyself. Withdraw thyself from money-hungry pastors that, that it telling you if you ain't got no money, God ain't dealing with you. Right. 
If you're broke, uh, uh, then that's a deem. That's a, that's a demon, a spirit, a deem, a Satan on you right there. You're broke because God ain't dealing with you. You can activate miracles in your life if you know how to say the right things. A prophet of God is the visible Jesus that came to bring you out of your poor state. Poverty is a witchcraft spirit. You'll never be close to Jesus through poverty. Never. Jesus died for you to be rich. You're supposed to have a lot of money. The Bible showed us what worship was. It's when you go to a man of God and you sow unto them as if you're sowing unto a man of, uh, unto God himself. Prosperity angels be wanted to move with so many children of God. But the prosperity angels cannot move with them because they don't sow. So, so you get money and you never sow. When God is testing you with the money that comes into your hand to see if you're going to sow it into his gospel. And if you sow it into his gospel, then he can multiply you and give you supernatural money. Money unlimited. Unlimited money. Unlimited money. Unlimited money, but you got to learn how to honor God with your money and sow into your man of God. You know what the Holy Ghost said to me? You know what the Holy Ghost said to me? You know what the Holy Ghost said to me? This is what the Holy Ghost said to me. The Holy Ghost said to me that Makatala Makosekete Randa Namako Randa Namasia Rata Korekese Rapa Karamaka Rakara. Rapa karama karama ka. Oh, saints in Jesus' mighty name. You can watch a man of God for, for years and weeks and you don't sow no seed. You're a thief. God ain't going to bless no thief. You watch a man of God and never sow into the man of God. And you live your whole life with a financial curse because you ate food and you stole. When you sow seed... You enter into a place where God is obligated to put money in your hand. Other than that, he's not obligated to put no money in your hand. There's supernatural money, supernatural finances, supernatural angels that could bless you if you sow. The seed will protect you from diseases and sicknesses from coming upon you. Everybody else will begin a cold, but you can't get a cold because you got the seed in the ground. Listen, do you understand? That when you don't sow seeds, you curse your children's life. Listen, do you understand that when you don't sow seeds, you curse your children's life? Listen, do you understand that when you don't sow seeds, you curse your children's life? When you don't honor God financially, you curse your children's life. This is more than just you. You mess up the life and the future of your children. Now they got to fight all these demonic spirits because of you. And you could have eradicated the demon spirits if you had humbled yourself and sold into your man of God. Follow the Holy Ghost and be rich and be blessed and have your house and have your car and have your spouse and be a superstar. You better turn away from them. You better turn away from them. Right. Uh, give me verse, Psalm chapter, jump up to verse 10. Jump up to verse 10. Verse 10. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Not money in itself. It's the love of money, which your money-hungry pastors will not turn away from. They will not uh, teach you the truth because they have love for money. And it's the root of why so much evil is in our communities. Read on. What's wild? Some coveted out there. Uh -huh. They have erred from the faith. Read on. And pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God. O, o, o man of God, O woman of God, read. Flee these things. Uh huh. And follow after righteousness. Which is the commandments. Godliness. Which is commandments. Faith. Uh huh. Love, patience, meekness. Uh huh. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. 
one to thou art also called, and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. By your actions, what God is saying. Nobody can speak evil of you. So if you're a man of God or you're a woman of God, you better withdraw yourself from the money-hungry pastors that violate God's law. Right. And with 15, this is 15 minutes with a captain. I am Captain Zakar to my right. Officer Laha. And with that, we say shalom. Shalom. Now you will see the true men of God. We are not black men. We are the Israelites. Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.